Hey, it's time for VOBS, and George is not here. You're in... Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. The man is in Pennsylvania. But no matter where he is, we bring you this show. And tonight we've got a very special guest, Paul Straquerta. Here I am, also in Pennsylvania. Yay! And here I am out in sunny Southern California. But I'll bet it's warmer there. <laughs> yes, you can tell. Yuck. Yeah, all right. Okay. We're going to talk with Paul. We've got. If you have a question for him, throw it in our chat room. If you've got a question for George and I, throw it in our chat room. And we'll throw it against the wall. We'll see what sticks. Coming up now on Voice Yay, Over Body Shop. Yeah. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place, George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is, together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hey, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem, and that's my Uncle Mark. Hey, Uncle Mark, how you doing? And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what takes you to uh, the far end of Pennsylvania? Oh, well, the far end of Pennsylvania is where my family lives, lives, where I grew up. And there's a whole bunch of family visiting right now. One of them is still behind me. Hi, Uncle Mark. Make sure they got the show on out there. All right, go out there and watch it. Okay, cool. <laughs> and, uh, and my aunt, I had my aunt, two uncles, all my mom's siblings here for a 70th birthday extravaganza over the weekend. And, you know, when family gets together, they get all the attention. And uh, so it's been interesting. It's been a fun, lots of going on and tons of distractions. My favorite distraction is right here, actually. Come oh, here. all right. Yeah, Ella. And Ella comes with you too to say happy too. birthday to Grandma. All right. Go ahead. All right. Fun. All right. It's been fun. It's been interesting. It's been a little stressful trying to keep all my clients happy at the same time. Dropped a couple of balls. You know who you are. I'm sorry, but we're alive. That's good to hear. All right. Well. Tonight, uh, we've got Paul Strickwitter with us, and he'll be joining us in just a second. Again, if you've got a question for him, throw it in our chat room. Somebody's monitoring the chat room. We're not sure who. Probably Sue. And we will get that question on. George is watching, so two people are watching. It'll happen. Uh, and uh, also, later on, we've got Tech Talk uh, when we do the show live. And uh, if you have a tech question for us, also throw it in the chat room. All righty. Well, it's time to introduce our guest. Uh, Paul Strickwitter is the nether voice, uh, originally from, uh, from the Netherlands and uh, now residing in Pennsylvania, where he is a successful voice actor and all, an author of Making Money in Your PJs, even though that's not his picture on the cover, and uh, a lot of other cool stuff, a blog that everybody reads, never short of something to say on the voiceover industry. Let's welcome the one and only Paul Strickwitter. Paul. <laughs> Thanks so much there, for having me. There he is. All right. Good to hey, see you. Hi. 
Good to have I, I decided to wear some Dutch colors today. Do you know why orange is a Dutch color? Because whenever you watch Dutch sports teams, they always wear orange. The Dutch fans, they wear orange. They go crazy for orange. Why do they wear orange? Why do we wear orange? Because the Dutch flag is red, white, and blue, right? Right. So anybody have a guess? Because uh, it's not orange? <laughs> the official flower of uh, Holland? Not quite. It has to do with the Dutch royal family. The Dutch uh, royal family is known as the House of, of Orange. Orange. That is yes. correct. That's right. That's why. All right. And you still have a, a, a royalty, as I recall. Oh, yes, very much so. We uh, have a, a queen from Argentina and a Dutch king, King Willem Alexander and Queen Maxima. They have three beautiful daughters and they're incredibly popular in the Netherlands. Everybody loves seeing them. They're not as uh, stuck up as the British royal family or other royal families. They're actually a little bit more like you and me, and people like that. They mix and mingle. They're uh, highly intelligent, and uh, they're really the darlings of Dutch society. And uh, I'd say the longer I'm away from the Netherlands, the more I start appreciating these things. And I follow <laughs> the royal family on Facebook, which I would never do, uh, which I never did in Holland. I collect Delft Blue and all these things, and we just had a shipment from Van Der Veen's Dutch, Dutch store. Because, you know, I, I miss home. I want to go back home. I want to taste home. And I want to bring the Netherlands uh, as close to me as, as possible. Because that's, even though I'm an American citizen, my heart is still in Holland. Yeah. Yeah, you love watching those speed skaters. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, now, you're a successful voice actor and, uh, and, and a blogger. But about a year and a half ago, we were all stunned to hear that you had a stroke. How do you look back at that experience? It was one of the most weird and puzzling moments in my life. Because I was sitting here in this chair when it happened, in this very room. And I didn't know it happened. Because what, what basically happened was I passed out. And since then, I've passed out a number of times too, waking up in the arms of a, a fireman and ending up in the hospital again. And I was wondering what was going on. It was so weird because I've never had a stroke. I never studied the symptoms of a stroke. Now I know that if you feel numbness or weakness in your face or your arms, especially in one side, that's a sign. If you feel confused or you have difficulty speaking, trouble seeing out of both eyes, staying balanced or even getting up, all these are signs of a stroke. I had no idea what was going on, but I was experiencing all these things. All I knew at that point was that I was on the floor of my studio and the door was hermetically sealed because it's one of those big, heavy studio doors. I couldn't open it and I could barely breathe because I was running out of oxygen. And I honestly thought that I was going to die. And uh, that's another place where you want to be, really. If you're gonna you start saying to yourself, what can I do to get out of here? Because I can't open the door. I need help. But how do we reach somebody? I, uh, I couldn't reach my phone. I knew where it was, but I, I had no strength in my arms to reach my phone and call my wife. I tried speaking to Siri, because I know that if you talk to Siri, it will, will call 911, right? And I didn't recognize my voice. It said like, Siri, call 911, call 911. That's, that's not me. And then I started banging on the wall and nothing happened. Nothing happened for a long time. And then I passed out again. And at the same time, at a different place in the town where I live, my wife was expecting me at a council meeting. My wife is a counselor in the, in the ward where I, in the, the borough where I live. And she expected me at the meeting and I didn't show up and she got really worried. And we have this, amazing connection, I guess, that um, defies words and logic, but she felt that something could be seriously wrong. So she decided to call friends of ours who live a couple of houses down from us. They have the keys for when we, we leave on vacation, they feed the cats, etc. So they were able to um, get inside the house and check in on me. And um, I can't tell you how relieved I was to hear them knocking on the wall. And I, I yelled, yelled, it's me, it's me, open the door, open the door. And one of our friends is a nurse and he immediately saw the signs of a stroke and uh, tried to wake me up again, get me out of my, my confused state. And at that point, the police came in and the EMTs came in. And uh, then I blanked out and I woke up in the, the emergency room of a nearby hospital where they couldn't really help me. They just stabilized me. 
And then they said, this guy needs to go to a stroke center as soon as possible. And uh, before I knew it, um, I was on the floor of a helicopter being uh, flown to, uh, to a stroke center nearby. And then um, I, uh, I blanked out again. But in the middle of what turned out to be an operation, I woke up and I noticed that they were putting a tube in my, my groin. And what they did was um, trying to reach my brain and take a blood clot out. That was the cause of the whole stroke. And it was very weird because I was in tremendous pain. I had the worst headache I've ever had in my life. Then I felt this tube going through my body and reach my, my brain. And it, it felt like you know, one of those grabbers that you see on a fair, you know, when you grab a, a little stuffed animal or something, it felt like going in the middle of my skull. And it got, it got hold of that blood clot. I took it away and immediately I felt a tremendous relief. And the last thing I remember is a big smile on the face of my doctor. And he said, he's going to be okay. <laughs> That's oh, the last thing I gee. Yeah. yeah. I've never heard the retelling of a stroke treatment like that. That boggles my mind absolutely to the core. Wow. Well, you know, what, what, what I heard later is that um, my wife was on her way following the ambulance, the, uh, the, the, the ambulance and uh, the, um, the helicopter. And uh, she got a call from the doctor because the doctor said, I just want to introduce myself because there's probably not going to be a lot of time uh, for us to talk. Because with a stroke, you know, timing is of the essence. If you see somebody who has the signs of a stroke, Make sure that you call 911 as fast as possible because every minute counts because the longer you wait, the more brain cells the victim tends to lose and the worse off you are. So he said to her, you know, there's not much time to talk, but I want you to know there are basically two scenarios. We have to do a CAT scan first and then we'll know how much the damage is really, how much the, uh, the, the brain loss has, has spread around his brain, how big the blood clot is. And um, you have to uh, think of two scenarios. One is it's so bad he won't survive. And the other one is that he will wake up and he'll be severely handicapped. That's just prepare yourself for the worst. And thank goodness, as you can tell, I'm still here to tell the tale. Yes. I was extremely, extremely lucky uh, that I'm still here. And I, people ask me all the time, how are you feeling? And I feel so incredibly grateful and bewildered and puzzled that I was able to survive this ordeal. And I'm walking, I'm talking, I'm working, are you, I'm are you, writing. Are you fully recovered? Life like never before. Are you fully recovered from it? That's the thing. Since you don't make new brain cells, you never really ever fully recover from it. What the brain is doing now is it's finding new neural pathways mm -hmm. so that the brain cells that I do have uh, are taking over from the brain cells that are dead. But I just visited my neurologist a week ago and he looked at my progress and said, uh, well, all the uh, recovery is done now. From now on, it will only get worse, won't get better. He is Russian. <laughs> Mr. Optimist. That's a yeah. very uh, empowering message. I say, <laughs> it will only get worse from now on, it won't get better. You have you've stopped your recovery. By the way, that's something I completely chose to ignore. <laughs> one, thing you, one, you, one thing you learn uh, when you're in a situation like this is don't ever trust experts, unless they're called Dan and George, of course, but never trust experts because there's only so much they know about so little. Because my own cardiologist um, had declared me not a stroke risk. And a couple of months after he said, you're not a stroke risk, I got a stroke. So, you know, you got to use your own brain and check in on your own health. And um, of course, it's good to, to help people um, in your camp who know what they're doing, but always do your own homework, do your own research, because you can't ever trust a, an expert, really. Yeah, well, with the internet these days, you can learn about anything. You know, because if I, if I needed an instructional video on how to do, you know, a bone graft or something, there's probably a video on there. I'm like, I can do that, but anyway. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's uh, that's the trap that a lot of people fall into as well. Think, oh, this VO thing. You know, I'll just look up a couple of <laughs> yeah well, videos well, on the internet. But there's tons of them. Yeah, and uh, it's you know, you can't learn how to drive a car on the internet, can you? It's the same with voiceovers. It, it looks so easy, and that's the thing. Everything that looks easy 
is not easy. Yeah. In fact, I think the easier it looks, the harder it is to do. And that's something that I found out with my recovery as well, because yeah. I think I'm still recovering and I hope I will keep on recovering. That's why I chose not to believe the doctor that said, this is the end, it will only get worse. No, right. I think it will get better. Yeah. So, oh. so how, did this, how did this impact your career? I mean, you were, I, I remember you were out for a while and then I saw you somewhere and, uh, you know, it was like, I'm tired. You know, it's like, I'm sure it was along the lines of, I'm going to go for a walk. No, I'm going to go take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh gosh. That's one big leftover from this stroke. It's my level of energy. I used to be good for like five, six hours in the studio. I did a lot of long term, long form narration. And I love doing that. I did a lot of audio books and a lot of e-learning stuff. I got to tell you, after pretty much an hour of narrating, I'm completely pooped. <laughs> I don't like that because that cuts down on my time of making money. And first of all, after the stroke, all I did was sleep, sleep, sleep for months because that's the best way your body and your mind recover. Sleep is what I needed and sleeping is what I did. And uh, for at least a year, I'd say I barely made any money. And now I can imagine all those people that we, we find on, 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 on Facebook starting a GoFundMe campaign because they've run into health problems. And, you know, if we don't work, we don't make any money. So that's really, really tough. And um, thank goodness for my wife. She's a music teacher. She teaches flute and piano and she had her students. But if it were not for her, I don't know how I would have survived. So that stuff, you know, the lack of energy, and that's still something I'm struggling with. Yeah. If I'm, if, if I, you know, another thing that happened was my voice, because my voice was not what it used to be in, in, in two ways. One, one was very weird. I woke up out of the anesthesia and I sounded like a robot, literally like this. I could not emote any emotion because I didn't get in touch with that part of myself. That was the emotional part because my stroke happened on the, the right side of the brain and that's where the seat of the emotions are. So I sounded like a robot, which is not really good when you're doing voiceovers for a living. I would say I, not. I, I saw the text and I could not bring myself to put emotion into words. So that's kind of inconvenient. <laughs> how long, did it, how now, long did it take for you to, to get that back? I'd say a year of speech therapy and exercises every single day where I really had to take a page from the phone book or some very, very boring piece of copy and go at it and, and now be utterly joyful. Okay, I did it, joyful. Now be completely sad. Now pretend that your girlfriend just broke up with you. You know, she, they threw all kinds of emotions at, the, at me, which is really good if you wanted to learn how to become an actor. So I learned a lot as well. But it took me a while to get there. And it was, I always describe it like this. It was like, I saw my emotions. They were behind a wall. I could see the door that would give me access to what's behind the wall. I could see the key, but I could not get the key to open that door and, and reach it. Wow. And you know what was a big breakthrough for me? Mm. When I went to VO Atlanta, that was in at the end of March, I think this year. And when I come home, I was a different person. It was like the stories that you hear from people who go to some revival <laughs> gathering, you know, where there's something happening where they catch the spirit. But honestly, I don't know what it was, but being with all these wonderful people, that tremendous energy at voiceover Atlanta completely changed me and the floodgates opened and completely the opposite of what I was before happened. Before I couldn't access my emotions. Now I'm really super emotional. <laughs> it's very socially inappropriate and very inconvenient, but I can't contain myself. I, I, I get tearful at the weirdest moments. Mm. Well, we're and, glad to have, uh, we're, we're glad to have you back. I mean, clearly. <laughs> and, uh, if you're just joining us, our guest is Paul Strickrida and we're talking right now about the, the stroke he had, but more importantly, his recovery. And if you've got a question for him, throw it in the chat room right now. If you're watching on Facebook or if you're in our regular chat room, uh, throw it in there and uh, we'll get that question to him in our next segment. George, you had a question for him? Yeah. What, if anything, do you attribute to your degree of recovery? I mean, I know you said, don't listen to the doctors, you know, listen to yourself. <laughs> 
But I mean, do you feel like your diet and fitness routine before the stroke attributed to your health now and how well you've been able to recover? Uh, I, I really have to admit it because uh, like many voiceovers, I was leading a very sedentary life. I'm in this box all day long. I love what I do. And I really get so much into the moment that I forget that time passes and that I really need to get up and stretch and do my exercises. And I really didn't do it. And um, I have to admit that I still, in that respect, have to learn my lesson because I'm just so darn tired all the time that I don't feel like going to the gym. I really know I should. I know that I walk a lot more. I love to hike. I love to bike. I love to swim. But really, I need to still keep on working on staying into shape. And um, of course, it was part of my, um, uh, it was hereditary as well, because my, my dad had heart problems, my mom had heart problems, and I have something called AFib, atrial fibrillation, which really means that your heartbeat goes crazy for no reason. And I never knew that, because for me, it was completely normal that I had a heartbeat of 200. And uh, one night, my wife was was leaning with her head on my chest and she said, what the heck is going on there? Your heart just goes bonkers. This is not normal. I said, not normal. This is just the way I am. He said, no, we got to go and see cardiologist. Then they hook you up and they do the EKG and they said, yeah, congratulations. You're one of the many people in the United States who's got atrial fibrillation. Now you're going to be on a regimen of, uh, of pills for the rest of your life and blood thinners and all sorts of things. Mm. But um, yeah, my sedentary lifestyle wasn't really uh, helping. Plus, I don't have any ventilation in the studio and that's dumb, that's really dumb. Well, I, the only thing that I can do is to ventilate is open the door. But when you're so caught up in the moment, you forget opening this door and before you know it, you don't have any oxygen. And um, that contributed to me fainting and then my heart playing up. So one thing led to another. We can fix that. We can fix that, by the way. Oh, I, I, please do. Yes. <laughs> Actually, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So anyway. Okay, good. Yes, uh, yes, yes. If you could uh, vent about that, that would be great. Yeah, but, uh, like great pun. Uh, anyhow, um, yeah. now you've been you you blog a lot. You've you've been blogging for you know since I've known you, which is you know getting on towards ten years here. Uh, Absolutely. You've been you've been doing it. And you, you blog about a lot of interesting things. Uh, you know, I mean, you blogged about your stroke and, and the recovery and stuff like that. But I'm sure it gave you a different perspective on life in general. And uh, you've, been, you've been brutally honest in your blogs lately. Uh, I mean, you talked that was about... Not e that was not easy to make that choice because uh, do I really want to share with the world that I'm not well, that I can't work? Yeah. Before you know it, uh, people think of me as, oh, that's Paul in his stroke. I better not invite him because you never know what, what they'll do when there's a live session. He's unreliable. He's, he talked about his voice and his voice is not steady. So let's not hire the guy. So that was a professional risk. Yeah. At the same time, I really wanted to give meaning to something that is utterly meaningless to me, a stroke, that I had got a stroke. It's, just, it's ridiculous, really. There's no... There's no other way to describe it. There's no way to make sense of something like this. But I wanted to give it some meaning. And the only way I could do that is to share what happened to me with other people so that they can recognize the signs of a stroke and maybe save a life down the line and help people become aware of their lifestyle, their level of stress, and what they can do to stay healthy and be more healthy. So use me as an example and um, hold me up as a mirror and say, please, please, please be careful and be grateful and appreciative of what you have and, and make sure that you that you be are well and stay well. So um, yeah. ultimately that was more important for me than um, my considerations for my, my career. Yeah. And you know, it's been so incredibly wonderful to see all the responses from the people from all over the world um, to my whole situation. I could have never imagined the warmth and the love and the support that I got from the people. And now it's going to happen again. Mm. You know, I had this when I did my talk at VO Atlanta about the power of words. And I had a nice room full of wonderful God people, colleagues who were there. And some of them never heard my story. But I, I told them that when I woke up in the hospital in the middle of the night, 
and I was disoriented, had no idea what happened to me and what was going to happen to me, whether or not I would make it. And I needed some distraction. So what do you do? You pick up your phone and you go to Facebook. And I just told people that I had this stroke and I was in the hospital and I start reading. And people that I know, I've known for a long time, and people that I don't even know, but that I'm friends with on Facebook, that I haven't been in touch for a while. They were all so wonderful and kind. And they've really helped me. And they continue to help me because not a day, not a week goes by that somebody checks on me and said, Paul, I had to think about you. How are you doing? Is there anything that I can do for you? How can I help you? And uh, it's just so incredibly heartwarming. Yeah. Because I'm really happy that I shared it with the world. And I want to use today this, this show as well to give a big thank you to all of you who have been there for me and who continue to be there for me. You probably have no idea how much that means but it really helped me hang in there and be as well as I am today. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Well, you, right. Paul, you and I have one common thing in common. I've not had a stroke, but I have lost my composure at VO Atlanta in front of 600 people. Live. <laughs> I did that a couple of years ago. Yeah. So I joined you in that energy from that crowd. It's yeah. pretty intense. Yeah. So. I, I got to tell you, Paul, though, you sound great. Uh, although, Interestingly enough, you have regained a little bit of your Dutch accent. Have I? Okay. <laughs> Which is kind of, <laughs> kind of fascinating. Um, now, you've been writing, you know, I mean, aside from writing about your stroke and stuff, you've also been writing, you wrote recently about misphonia, which I thought was fascinating. Talk, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something about, I'm, I'm getting to the stage where um, I'm not sure whether what happens to me, I can attribute to the stroke. Or maybe it's just old age. <laughs> no, I just turned 56. Mm. But either way, it, the symptoms are the same. But I was watching this phenomenal movie on Netflix um, about uh, a guy who is a, so, uh, a specialist on a submarine. And he listens on his headphones all day long and he picks up signals from foreign craft. And he just by listening to the signal, he can tell what boat it is, how many warheads it has, and how far away it is. So he's got golden ears and it's perfectly normal and very appropriate and useful in that context of a submarine but then he goes out in the real world and all these sounds get to him and he basically gets overwhelmed by the sounds and i watched that movie and said you know what that's me yeah we seemed we seem to have lost the connection we can we can get a signal back from Pluto, but from Pennsylvania, it's kind of tough. It sounds, and of course, it has to do with my. All right. Well, we're going to take a break right now and reestablish contact with with Paul, and uh, we'll be right back we with more, on with our more questions here. right after this. Before time began, there was VOBS TV. Watch, or else. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. 
Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. For the last decade or so, the name vo to go, go has become synonymous with up-to-the-moment expert award-winning training in voiceover performance, business building, and mindset. But it's also been a name that requires some explanations, sometimes a repeat calling out the numeral two. Well, it's time for a change. It's time for a simpler, more direct, and easy-to-spell name for their company and their training. One that embodies the mission they have to train voiceover talent in the art, the commerce, the science, and the mindset of voiceover. To help make VO 2 go, go clients superheroes to their clients. Within the next few weeks, they'll say goodbye to VO2GoGo.com and they'll say hello to something new and deep and intelligent and fun. The new name will represent all the familiar knowledge and content David and his team have been giving you for the last 12 years, plus a whole lot more. And it'll be a lot easier to spell and to type into your browser. Stay tuned. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Show. No, but Paul has a daughter and she's learning voiceover. Shh. And we are back. And we know Paul is back. Paul, are you back with us? I know. I'm here. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Boy, the internet, it's like you never know what's going to happen. We were talking about, you were, you were talking about misphonia. And you were talking about a movie with a submarine a sonar guy. We're, we're picking up where you were talking about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this guy is known as Mr. Golden Ears. And what he can do is he listens to the sonar all day long and he can pick up what vessel it is, what how many warheads the vessel has, how close it is. And the the, the, the whole operation of the, uh, the submarine really depends on his ears. And of course, they get into kind of a nuclear war situation. It gets really tense. But anyway, the point was that when I looked at that guy, I said, you know, that is a little bit like me because I pick up things that other people normally would not pick up because I listen to the sound all the time. I analyze it. I hear every mouth click, every rumble, every barking dog, every little bit of detail. And it's fantastic because I'm able to do my job because of it. And I'm sure you can relate to that, both of you, because you listen to audio all the time. You need to analyze and hear things that other people don't hear. But it's also incredibly pain in the neck because I can't shut it off. I hear these things constantly. And maybe after my stroke, it became intensified but that because I became so irritated by sounds, people eating very close to me, lip smacking, people chewing with their mouth open, the, the oomph and the beat of somebody listening to their earbuds. And I get so mad at it. I just cannot stand it. Uh, or I go to a movie theater and it's all so loud. I go to a cafe, you want to talk to people, no, there's music in the background. And it really, really, I don't know, it, it, it stresses me out. And apparently I'm not the only one when I wrote about it. I think I got at least 20, 25 responses from people. Who say, I have exactly the same thing. Huh. So it is a thing now. It's called misophonia, which is kind of hatred of sound when you translate it literally. And I, I wish I could turn it off, but I haven't found that that button yet. So if you know the switch, please let me know. I don't know. Oh, all right, we'll throw it out there. Now, one of the things you've been doing is you're you're now coaching your daughter for voiceover, are you not? Well, I've been doing that. It was quite a while ago. And I have to tell you, it didn't go that well. <laughs> I... <laughs> The first thing that I, I really missed was that I don't think she was really into it. And I kind of talked her into it. I said, you know, it would be nice for you. And uh, it, was, it was a good job that was they were offering. And it was a lot of money involved as well. And I thought she really had a good voice. And my daughter was like me. She was an early reader. She was very expressive. 
So I said, you know, why not a little bit of father-daughter bonding time? And then I got into the studio and um, gave her the text and she started reading and it really sounded not very good at all. And uh, I started coaching her and she said, Dad, do I have to do this? Do I really must? And why is it, why is this right? And why isn't it what I do right? And they start to explain. And I felt like that, that I was not capable of explaining clearly to her what I was doing. And she felt like that whatever I was telling her she was not doing right, that it was really wrong, that she was making mistakes. And the more I tried to coach her, the more sad she got. And at the end, she was in tears. And she said, Dad, can you please leave the booth now? I'll, I'll, um, I need some time by myself and I'll make the recording and I'm done, okay? <laughs> so uh, I should have prepared it much better and um, taken more time to explain to her what it was that I'm doing and why we're doing certain things. Because you run into things that we just take for granted, you know, that you don't touch the microphone <laughs> while you're doing it, that you don't move from left to right that much, and that you stress certain words and not others. And then when you coach other people, you really learn about how hard this is that we're doing. And I learned that the hard way from my daughter, but the story does have a happy ending because after her experience, she recorded it and I, I cut it together and it was really nice, I thought. And of course she didn't get the job, which is another story and she felt terribly rejected. And I had to talk to her about that. But a couple of weeks ago, we had Father's Day weekend and um, I'm one of the announcers at our local farmer's market, the Easter farmer's market, which is the oldest continuously running farmer's market in the United States. We've been there since 1752. And so that's where I really get to use my announcer voice. And because of Father's Day weekend, I said, Skylar, you want to join me? She said, yeah, I'd love to. And while we were there, I said, hey, Skylar, why don't you want to do a couple of announcements? You know, do you, do you feel up for it? Yeah, of course. And uh, she uh, she took the information, she took the microphone, and she started talking, and she was great. I didn't have to coach her at all. She was such a natural, and we had a great time. And people responded to her. Finally, a younger voice, not this old middle-aged guy, you know, who has been doing it for ages. A young generation taking over, very nice, clear voice. And she said, Dad, if I, if I, can we do it again next week? I said, yeah, great. But on one condition that you also do the playlist for the, all the songs that we play at the market. And she really did that. And uh, we've been back almost every week now and people love her so much. I'm so proud of her. So even though it didn't work out with the whole voiceover thing, she's now one of the new announcers of the Easter farmer's market. Yeah, I had a similar thing happen with me with my kids too. I'm like, you know, I dragged them into the booth. One of them really didn't like it at all. And the other didn't like it very much, but now he does all his own cartoon voices and stuff. So he's just lucky he's got a dad with a really nice studio. It helps yeah. him out a whole lot. You ready to take a couple of questions from our audience? Oh, bring it on. Oh, we need to ask you what your daughter's age, age yeah. range was yeah. to yeah. that. Well, my, when we got in this, into the, the, the studio, I think she was around six or seven years old. And now that six or seven year old girl uh, is 17. <laughs> 17. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that really hits home. My, my 10 year old daughter, Ella is here with me. We take a, we took a little stab at it. There she is. <laughs> yeah, we, Hi, took Ella. A, we took a stab at it. And um, I knew that unless she was really highly motivated to pursue it, and that if, and unless we had time as parents to get her to the proper coaching she needed, because I could coach her to a small degree, but I'm not a voice actor. Um, that she wouldn't be, a, you know, wouldn't be realistic. So, you know, she, well, she's she's ten, and maybe tomorrow when she's eleven, or maybe when she's in seventh grade, she's gonna it's gonna click. At all the stuff she's seen her dad working with, and all these voice actors, and she go, ah, that actually is something I want to try. But you know, certainly not shoving her in any hard direction right now. But yeah. it's, it hits home hearing that story. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I never had the idea that my daughter should follow in my footsteps. I just thought this is a nice bonding experience. Let's have some fun together. <laughs> For her, it was an ordeal, and uh, I decided not to bring it up until she would bring it up. And uh, who knows what will happen? Um, she might actually go back into the studio and start recording again now that she's so easy with the microphone. Yeah. And it's it's not easy to to do this because in a way I think it's easier to be in a studio where there's nobody around you. Right. And you're anonymous because when you're at the market, we get thousands of people on a nice Saturday and they all see you 
And uh, if you're very self-conscious, it's not an easy thing. You know, they say the number one thing that people fear more than death is public speaking, and that's public speaking. But I love doing it because um, one of the things that we have in the studio is that we don't have the interaction with people. There's no feedback. When we say things into the microphone, we don't know how things land. But when you do live announcing, you see immediate response and you get immediate feedback. We had when Skyler was announcing and playing music, we had a couple of comedians at the market. They immediately started rolling with it. They started dancing and making fun. And we see people having fun there. It's a completely different experience from being in the booth. So I can highly recommend it to people who are wondering if there's more to voiceover life than just being in a booth talking to your hand. Please see if there's a local um uh, opportunity an event or something where they need an, an mc and and try your hand at that because i'm telling you i done some pretty great work as a voiceover for big companies that pay me big money but there's nothing as satisfying as being a volunteer at the farmer's market every yeah. saturday i just love it yeah i've done air shows and things like that and they are a lot of fun because you really get to you get to shake hands with people and it, it's really great we got a question from our good friend Lee Penny. Who, hey, hey, Lee. Yeah, who asks, hey, Paul, how'd you get so darn good looking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I think that uh, I have to talk to my wife because she obviously talked to Lee here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks ago, I... Uh, I had a tooth that was not cooperating and it needed and needed to go. And toothache is the worst ache. And my part of my my face was swollen. And I I uh, wrote on my pictures. This is Mr. Potato Head. That's what I felt. Yeah. <laughs> thank goodness the swelling has gone down. But uh, thank you very much, Lee. It, I appreciate it. it. Must be my Dutch genes. Yeah. Uh, Fred North asks. Uh, he said, uh, "I recall you talking about almost suffocating in your booth." And you were saying that you, you still haven't added ventilation into that booth. Now, I remember when you were building that and you wrote a, an ebook about it. Yeah. Uh, and we interviewed you before you did any of the treatment. And it was the, the, it was, it sounded like you were in your bathroom. Uh, but it sounds much better now. That was good six, seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, are you planning on adding ventilation? Is it something you've thought about? I mean, it's because I remember you, you hermetically sealed this thing and talked about getting all the little pinpoints of light out once you sealed it up. So that thing is completely airtight. It is, it is, it is. And um, I've been thinking about it lately because uh, I need a new computer and everybody recommends that I should uh, take my computer out of the booth, but that re required drilling holes in my booth. And I just don't want that. I... Ah, it's not that bad. You know, you... Well... Yeah, it's probably a lot quieter in there than you probably realize. So, you know, but there are ways to ventilate. So we're gonna, we're going to work on that. Anyway. Well, I'll tell you, that's nothing to sneeze at because yeah. uh, you can basically start. You don't run out of oxygen so much as you poison yourself with carbon dioxide. Yeah, that's the problem. So yeah. you, you you will die from the, your own carbon dioxide poisoning before you run out of oxygen. Yeah. Um, it. it I know someone at Bill's studio um, that it was an oversight. You know, he thought it's something he could deal with later. And I, I think it's causing some health ish, health risks because of it. And that yeah. studio is much larger yeah. facility. So um, at the yeah. end of the day, you know, noise floor is uh, something we can buy back with some technology. So don't worry about sacrificing it just a okay. little bit. Yeah, for your yeah. for your health. Yeah. So we, I'm, we I'm looking forward to uh, your one of your tech talks of all about ventilation. That would be I would be very interested in that. We're going to talk Maybe about that, that tonight. We need actually. to talk about tech stuff today, and I don't have a lot on my docket, so this is now on the list. Yes. Great, great, great. It'd be a lot of fun to talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Smith asks, "Do you have any problems with any hand? And if so, is that the same or better? You didn't? Did you have much physical uh, problems? Oh yes, 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 absolutely." Because the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body, and my left side is still weaker. My hand is weaker, and um, when I'm really tired, my my leg starts uh, uh, dragging, mm. and um, 
So that's that's something that I still struggle with, and I have these uh, rubber balls that I need to squeeze. And uh, that's one thing my wife says: "Come on, get the balls out and squeeze your balls." <laughs> <laughs> and I don't do it enough. So okay, she's watching right now. I promise, Pam, when I come back up, I'll start squeezing my balls again. <laughs> but that's something that I noticed: that the left side of my body is the weaker side. Yes, definitely. Interesting. Yeah. Um, four things. Sure. Yeah. Four things that you wish you would have known before getting into voiceover. Go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the one the, to pick up on the last thing, of course, how important your health is, because I think that it's the one thing that all of us take for granted. We don't think about that when we're well. We don't think about it. It's like, you know, you, um, you, uh, you hit one of your toes and all of a sudden you realize it's there and how annoying it is and how painful it is. That's with me too. I was leading my happy life, and uh, I knew my heart was a little, my heartbeat was a little bit off, but that was it. And then you wake up in the emergency room, and all of a sudden, everything around you is beeping. People every half hour ask you what your name is, when you were born, who the president of the United States is, and things like that. And then you realize how fragile life really is. You know, you don't really need to do anything to get into this situation. Um, and uh, so I think that if if anything. I hope that people will become more mindful of their health and how important it is that you take good care of yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of other people as well. So that's one big thing. The other thing I think that people overlook is with technology having become cheaper, that they think it's so cheap to get your start in voiceover. And it, it probably is compared to many years ago, but the rest is just an illusion. Because when I think back, I've, I've been doing this for many, many years now, how much I've invested over the years in this career, it's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. And it's all money that's coming out of your pocket. Because if you go to a bank and you ask for a loan because you want to become a voiceover, I bet nobody- Good luck with that off. one, yeah. Yeah, exactly. First of all, you're a freelancer. Mm -hmm. So there's no steady income coming in. So I said, well, come back if you have a steady income. Forget about that. It's all it has got to come from you. So you need to have a big cash cushion to start this thing up. And you need good equipment because you you got to get past the USB microphone and your, your cheap setup. Then you need to have a website. You need to get hosting. You need to get a couple of demos. That's thousands of dollars right there. And then you need to keep on investing, investing, investing. Every year you need to keep on improving. And you got you pay, pay your membership, your dues to, um, to, to Volvo, of course. It all adds up. You go to conferences and it's all money spent that, that is worthwhile, but it's it's not cheap to make it in this business. And I think that's that's one thing that people overlook as well. Mm -hmm. And and we were talking a little bit before we got the show started. It's not as easy to be outstanding anymore and to stand out anymore because there's so many people trying to do what you do, and there's so many people who are better than you are, and you don't know it because you're by yourself. And you're watching your YouTube videos, hoping to get better, trying to teach yourself this thing that you think you like so much. And you discover that it's very hard to pick yourself up by your, your own bootstraps and improve at your own game. Because think about coaching as well. A good coach, I'd say, uh, costs at least 80 to 150 bucks an hour. I mean, I do coaching sessions. I charge $125 for 50 minutes. So um, that, that's not really cheap. And you really do need these things and it adds up. So if people had told me how, how expensive it would be to get started in this thing called voiceover, I would have thought twice about doing it. I, um, I was very glad that I had a support system of people around me who would be able to pay the bills while I was getting, uh, getting my feet wet doing this voiceover thing, because otherwise I would not have made it. It's, it's, it's so tough. It's so tough. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's, it's a, it's a fascinating story. And, you know, I mean, your career has been fascinating and, you know, how you, you know, you, you saw you started your career in, in the Netherlands and then brought it here and then, you know, trans, you know, and then transferring to doing freelance voiceover. Now you, you write about a lot of this stuff in your blog. A lot of it is, you know, I, we don't want to discourage people, uh, but like you were saying, it's not an easy business to get into, and you you're constantly you know railing on you know everybody's trying to get into voiceover, 
and should you do it? Mm -hmm. Well, it's for me, what I'm struggling with is finding the right tone of voice, because I don't want to be this guy with his raised finger and say, you know, you're doing this wrong and oh, bashing all the newbies all the time, because everybody has a right to to give this a go. And I, I think if people really feel that true passion, this calling, that's what they should do, because it's we all are in it because we love doing it. There's nothing more gratifying than you having a great session with a great director on the other end of the line who really elevates your level and brings things out of you that you never thought you had in you. And when you're done and the client is happy and you see the end result and you're really proud of what you've done, that's the best feeling in the world. And I really want everybody to have that feeling. So who am I to discourage them? And so I'm not going to say, don't do this, and you're doing this wrong, wrong, wrong all the time. But what I'm trying to do is to tell stories and, and instead of arguing with people, because it's hard to argue with a story. I think a story is just a story, a, a, a tale about someone else in your situation. And you can read it and you can choose to accept it and take away what you want to take away, or you can completely discard it. It's not this guy telling you what not to do or what to do. So. Um, that's why I find using this blog a very good good way for me to to reach people. And I'm I'm really astonished that after at least 10 years of writing that people are still interested in reading my stuff. Uh, I I'm read really it whenever I wake up in the morning and I go to my my phone first after I kiss my wife. Um and I and I pick up the phone and I'm like, "Oh, Paul's got a new blog post." So that's like one of the first things I'll do when I when I see that. Yeah. So I really appreciate it. Gerard Gerard McGuire said in the chat, you know, he said it's obvious what a fine writer Paul is. He is amazingly articulate. Yeah. And regarding how to subscribe to the blog, Nancy asks, "Well, hey Paul, how do you how do you subscribe to the blog? Cuz <laughs> there might be somebody watching who's not a subscriber." as hard as that is to believe? Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for asking that question. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a box that says subscribe, and you, you put your email address in there. You can unsubscribe anytime. That will mean that you get weekly updates, and uh, that's the simplest that's way to do that. That's nethervoice.com? Nether yeah, if you go to nethervoice.com forward slash nethervoice, that's really a bad uh, URL, but at the time <laughs> I, I had it, I uh, I didn't know anything about URLs. I should have done slash blog. But anyway, it's nethervoice.com slash nethervoice. <laughs> That's where you get to the blog. And then the upper right-hand corner, there's a little box, and you can put in your name. And I'll be eternally grateful for that. Excellent. Yeah. Paul, it is it is so good to see you, you know, in the pink again uh, <laughs> and, and, and working again and writing again and just being amongst us, which is the best part of all. And thanks for being with us tonight. Oh, I really enjoyed it. And um, I want to thank you guys, too, because you are doing such a wonderful service to our community. And you've been, I mean, talking about my blog, I've been going on forever, but you've been going for so long as well. I remember that you said, you know, we'll probably do this like maybe 10, 20 times, but you keep on going and going with the most tremendous guests and the way you're doing this, the whole interaction, and now you in Pennsylvania and you in California, and I'm, I'm here. It's really delightful, and I've learned so much. And all my students, all the people who want to know more about voiceover, I send them to you guys because you're not only informative, you're entertaining, and I've gotten to know both of you over the years, and you're both really good people. And we need more of you guys. So thank you so much for all you've done for our community and done for me personally. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Paul Strickland. Paul. Yeah, great to talk to you. Yeah. All righty. Well, George and I will wipe a few tears away and we'll be right back to say goodbye right after this. This is Anthony Mendez. You're watching Voice Over Body Show.
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. VoiceOverEssentials.com just put their VO1A microphone on sale for a limited time. $20 off the regular price of $299. Now, here are some of the most recent quotes they've gotten on the VO1A from the War Room Studio. We've been saying the VO1A is a really great quality mic for the dollar. Since 2011, we've been using it in our broadcast studio for eight years, and we're still it still hasn't let us down. They just work and sound good. This is a great mic. From Monsur Reyes. Thanks for this. Finally, a Harlan Hogan VO1A review. Based on my cans, that is a great sounding mic. From Richard Hall. I recently bought the VO1A and love it too. Amazing mic for the money. Here's another one. Hey, it's my mic. I own the VO1A and I've gotten hundreds of jobs over the years with it. I'm adding a 416 soon, but honestly, I think there'll always be a place for the VO1A in my arsenal. I can't tell you how many compliments I've received from top industry pros over the years regarding the sound. Also, take whatever you want from the VO1A's webpage, and here's the address right here. Mention that there are over 50 additional quotes from delighted customers at the bottom of the page. Hmm, including one from me. And of course, mention it's the voiceover microphone. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to Voiceover Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Hey, it's that time of the show where I make up something true about Source <laughs> Elements and Source Connect. And here's another true fact this software is the longest running audio streaming tool that's been used by the voiceover business in all, you know, there's, there's many tools out there that run on web browsers and there's other systems that work inside a metal box that go in your rack. And, but this thing has been around for well over 10 years and it is in doing so it has established itself source connect. That is of being really the business, tool for voiceover professionals. It has really become a standard. Um, now it's no longer become, do you have Source Connect? It is basically becoming now studios saying, what is your Source Connect ID so we can connect to you? I mean, it's really a big deal. Um, it's what studios ask for. So if you don't have it, go out, go to source-elements.com, sign up for a 15 day free trial of the Source Connect standard software. Um, you don't have to have the little iLock key to do that. Just if, if you're not ready to pay, don't worry about it. Just get that initial setup going. There's a little hurdle of setting up some technology to get it working. But once it's set, you're ready to go. And when that session comes in the door or you get that agent who says you have to have it or you get auditions saying you have to have it, you, you can say you got it. And when that job hits your, hits your inbox saying we're ready to go, Go online, pay for your subscription, or you can buy it outright, but you should have it. That's Source Connect, and it's a pros tool for connecting to studios. Uh, we'll be right back with more from VOBS and Dan back in California. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Well... It's so great to talk to Paul. I, I mean, it's always fun talking to him. I mean, I'll text with him every now and again, but, 
you know, hearing that story, it's a it's a good warning for everybody. I think it really is. Yeah. It really is. It's it's uh, health issues are are not something that are strange to me and my family. Uh, you know, strokes took out my grand both my grandmothers and uh, you know other health issues. Diabetes is a big issue, big issue. So it really makes me straighten up when I hear these stories. So I appreciate Paul's sharing that with us. Absolutely. Well, next week on this very show. It'll be Tech Talk number 14, which we are about to record. So, you, you know, you can sit, you can watch it live and ask questions live, or you can watch it all next week, but no matter what. So we'll do that. Who are our donors of the week? A large pile of them, from what I can see. Yes, we are so blessed, I have to say. Um, a couple names maybe I haven't seen before, and many I have, which is wonderful. Ryan Lilik. I believe it is. Let me spell it to make sure I didn't say it wrong. L-E-L-E-K. Uh, Tom Pinto. Thanks, Tom. Trey Mosley. Pearl Hewitt. George Whittem Sr. Whose, whose office you're office sitting in. <laughs> sitting in right now. As, as am I, sort of. Uh, who legitimately <laughs> cannot figure out how to cancel his auto <laughs> subscription. But he's glad it Darn. keeps going. Look. I talked to him about it today. He's like, no, no, no. I really do appreciate being able to support you guys doing what you do. Um, Patty Gibbons, Diana Birdsall, and Uncle Roy's Antland Productions. All Thanks right. for those subscriptions. Almost all of those are subscriptions, but you don't have to subscribe. If you just have a guest, if we have a guest on that you really found helpful or we teach you something or tell you something you needed to know, it's a good time to just drop us a little bit of a little donation. And it's right there on the website. Uh, vrbs.tv. Yeah. Also on our website, you can join the mailing list, which is pretty important. Our mailing list is over 600 now. So we want to get it up to a thousand. You know, mailing lists seem so passe and so, I don't know, not 90s, but social media is so overwhelming that the mailing lists are kind of coming back and are yeah. becoming more of a thing. So it's a valuable way to stay in touch when you're kind of overwhelmed with social media. Right. So if you need help with your home studio, well, there's only two places you need to go. One of them is George. And where do they go when they want to talk to you? You can head over to George the dot tech. And for many of you folks that maybe are under a certain age, or maybe I should say over a certain age. Okay. I'm being a little ageist. I apologize. <laughs> George the tech dot com. <laughs> Again, I have to mention my dad. He's like, I just don't like that domain, George the dot tech. I'm like, you know what? It's okay. There's cool. some people out there that get it. Right. But you can find me either place and all of my services are available to you right there on the website. And if you're overwhelmed with choices, there are a lot. Uh, you can always just drop us a message or call if you have. I'm trying to wonder what uh, service you should look into for your problems. And Dan, he does a lot of crazy stuff over there that's helpful. There's a lot of voiceovers at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And, uh, you know, I help people every day. They send me their audio. You can click on my specimen collection cup. Send me some dry audio from your studio. And let's see how you really sound. So that's a big help. Hey, if you want to be in our studio, get, let's get a shot of the studio audience, Sue. Yep. Oh, let's see it. Let's see it. Come on. I had a much bigger studio audience there, here. There's our studio. There, we, we need you in here. <laughs> I had a much bigger studio audience here. I took a picture <laughs> of everybody in the living room watching the show. There was about nine people yeah. watching here. So I'll, I'll post that for you guys. <laughs> yeah. If you want to join us in the studio, write to us at theguys at vobs.tv and say, hey, we want to come see the show live because it's fun to do see the show live and it makes us even more excited. Anyway, um, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. Vo to go, go For the time being. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and Jake Michael Collins Demos. All righty. We also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of fine webcasting. Uh, Sue we Marlena. Thank my parents for the use of this studio. Oh, absolutely. Uh, George and Mary, thank you so much for that. Uh, we didn't see them, just your just your uncles, uh, you know. But anyway, yeah. and and your daughter, uh, our our fantastic technical director Sue Morlino for doing a bang up job tonight, and of course Lee Penny who was watching tonight simply for being Lee Penny. All right. Well, now we're going to reset for Tech Talk, and uh, so stay tuned for that.
I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Bot Shop. Or VO. BS. Yeah. Alrighty.